So one of the most common questions that I get asked on this channel is, Sam, how much money is it going to cost me for me to start a Shopify dropshipping store? And because I get this question quite often, what I want to do is go through five or six different elements to start in a Shopify store. And I also want to go through exactly how much it's going to cost you for each of these different elements so that you can start your Shopify business in the cheapest way possible. And if you're new to this channel and you've never seen me before and you're thinking, who's this guy and why should I listen to him? Well, welcome. My name is Sam. And on this channel, what I do is release daily videos to help you guys when it comes to understanding in the world of starting an online business. But most importantly, I was able to start an e-commerce store, quit my full-time job, travel the world to various different locations while still being able to make an income from that e-commerce business, even on holiday. So I'm sure I'm definitely gonna be able to point you in the right direction. So as always, I don't wanna waste any more time. I wanna get right into it. If you find any value in the video at any point, don't forget to press the like button. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification so that YouTube can let you know when a new video has been released. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. All right, so jumping straight into one of the first things that you're going to need to pay for, which is obviously a Shopify account. Now, for those of you that are new to the world of building a dropshipping business, there's so many different platforms that you can use out there. There's some free ones that you can use and there's some cheaper ones than Shopify. But the only reason why I recommend it is because this is what I've been using myself over the past five, six, seven years. And I've never really had any issues with it. I've always found it very easy to use, very user-friendly, and I've found it very easy when it comes to getting my website sites ranked on Google as well. And because it is so easy to use, there is going to be a cost associated with that. And as you guys can see over here, it's going to cost you around $29 per month for you to use the basic plan. And there's three different options that you have when it comes to selecting a Shopify plan. So for example, right there, we've got the basic plan. And by the way, it's showing me in Great British Pounds because I'm based in the UK. So you're going to have to convert to dollars if you're from the United States. But as you can see, the basic plan is right here. And this is the one that I use with majority of the different Shopify stores that I started. I've never ever really used the Shopify plan or the advanced plan because I've never really needed to. For most of you that are watching this video, most likely you're going to use the basic plan. But if you're a beginner that's looking to get an understanding of how Shopify actually works and you don't want to pay the monthly fee straight away because you're trying to navigate Shopify, spend some time building your store and you don't want to start paying $29 from day one, then you are going to have the option to sign up for a trial by using the link in my description down below. And with this trial, you're not going to have to pay anything for three days, but after that, you are going to have to pay around one pound every month for the next three months, which means that you're going to pay a total of three dollars for you to use Shopify for completely free, which means that you're going to end up saving around $90 if you use that link in my description down below. All right, so moving on to the second expense that you should expect to pay when it comes to building your dropshipping business, which is the actual design of the website. And with this, it can end up being completely free where you don't have to pay anything, which I'm gonna explain in a moment, or you can pay up to around $300 or maybe $400, etc. And the reason why there's such a big gap like that is because you can either build the website yourself if you believe that you're capable of doing so, or what you can do is hire a freelancer on a website like upwork.com, freelancer.com for them to build your website for you. And if you do decide to go down the route of building it yourself, Shopify actually have a lot of free themes that make the whole job very simple. Like for example, as you can see right here, they've got all of these different popular free themes. So if you wanted to use one of them and you wanted to kind of get an understanding of how your store is going to look, what you can do is just click into it just like that. Then what you can do is just click on view demo store and it's going to give you an example of what your website is going to look like. And depending on whatever brand you're trying to build, you can go through all of these different free themes over here and pick which one is going to be best suited for the business that you're trying to build. All right, so moving on to the third expense that you guys need to make sure that you're aware of before you start your dropshipping business, which is the actual product cost and I know right now most of you are probably thinking about Sam this is drop shipping I don't need to pay for the product and you're definitely right about that but the thing is when it comes to initially getting started because Shopify payments is going to actually hold on to your payouts for a number of days you're going to need a certain budget for you to be able to place any orders yourself when a customer buys an item from your store. The way that it would normally work as you continue growing your business is that the customer will buy from you, you get the money from the customer, you go over to your supplier, you buy the product. But initially the money is gonna be held for maybe five days, maybe up to 10 days. And you're gonna need some sort of option for you to be able to pay for the item yourself until the money is now released into your bank account. And in terms of the actual budget that you should keep to the side, of course it's going to depend on what items you're selling, whether it's high ticket, whether it's low ticket. But I would say that you should keep at least minimum $200 on the side ready for you to place any orders that you might get. But one quick tip down to give you guys if you are looking to use your own money when it comes to buying the product from your supplier which is that you should get a credit card. Now the credit card that I use for my businesses is the Amex 
gold credit card. I've got one for a couple of my different businesses. But the reason why it's so useful is that every single time I use it for any single transaction, I'm going to be able to get points back that I can now use to buy anything that I want in the future. So this is a great way for you to kind of spend money and also make money whilst you're spending money. So if you do get to the point where you're now getting a lot of orders and you're spending a lot of money on a regular basis and you want to get the exact same credit card that I've got, then you can sign up using the link in my description down below because if you use that link, you're going to be able to get bonus points once you sign up and you get accepted. And another tip that I want to give you guys when it comes to you being able to speed up the process when it comes to you receiving the money that your customer has paid you, which is that you need to log into the back end of your Shopify account, click on settings, and you're going to see this page over here once you've clicked on payments. Then what you need to do is scroll down here to where it says payout schedule. You're going to see the section that's going to give you these three different options where you're basically telling Shopify to either release the money to your bank account every business day or every week or every month. For you to receive your money a lot sooner, of course, you need to make sure that you select this first option right here where it says every business day so that it's going to reduce the amount of money that you're spending and you're going to be able to receive the money from your customer a lot quicker so that you can now pay off your credit card or you can now put the money back into your bank account but just bear in mind that you are going to need some sort of budget on the side ready for you to buy the product cost until shopify starts releasing your money a lot sooner all right so moving on to the next cost which is marketing expenses now with this it all depends on how you want to do it again you don't have to pay anything but you may also want to put around 300 dollars to the side and the reason for this big price gap is because you can either use free methods for example tiktok organic maybe using something like instagram reels or even writing blog articles on the back end of your shopify store and getting ranked on google or you can maybe use some sort of paid marketing method now the one that i recommend is google ads because this is what's allowed me to see the most success with a lot of my shopify businesses but you've got so many different options Options out there when it comes to building up traffic and getting customers onto your website now if you are planning to spend some sort of money on marketing you need to make sure that you're optimizing things in the best way so that you're not wasting your budget but the aim of the game when it comes to initially running some sort of paid ads is that you're essentially buying data so for me personally when it comes to a brand new Shopify website that I might build right now if I'm going to use Google Ads for it I may not be able to get a return on investment on my money straight away and I may even make a loss but with those ads that I ran I'm gonna be able to now log in to the back end of my Google account and look at the data, see exactly what drove people to my website in terms of the search terms, see which keywords led to sales, see which keywords led to no sales. And from there, I'm going to be able to now run the campaign again and optimize it and refine it so that I can increase my sales the second time around. That's why it's very important that you educate yourself on whatever ad platform that you're going to use so that you don't end up wasting your budget, you don't end up wasting time, and you don't allow yourself to become demotivated with the whole dropshipping process. All right, so we're now on the fifth expense that you need to be aware of which is Shopify apps and softwares and again the actual budget that you're going to need is going to depend on how many Shopify apps you want to use and how many softwares you want to get when running your business so I would say that the amount may range between zero dollars if you don't want to use any apps at all or it could go up to around $99 per month and just to give you an example of what I'm talking about I've just logged into the back end of one of my Shopify accounts and these are some of the apps that I use to run this particular store but just to clarify you don't need to use all of them you don't even need to use none of them you just need to make sure that you remember that you may need to budget up to around $99 per month depending on which apps or softwares you want to use and moving on to one of the final costs that I'm going to speak about in today's video which is miscellaneous expenses now when I say miscellaneous expenses what this means is that you need to make sure that you're aware that you're going to have to spend money now and then for random things that may pop up for example, your website may start working overnight, which means that you may need to get a freelancer that's gonna be able to help you with that. Or there may be an issue when it comes to your supplier randomly charging you a little bit more than you expected, which means that you now have to cover the cost because you can't go back to your customer to get the money from them because you've already promised them a certain price. There's so many different situations that may happen when running your business that you need to be ready for. And that's the reason why I say, with the miscellaneous expenses, you just need to have between $50 or $150 or more to the side ready for you to be able to pay for these random expenses. But of course, there's a little bit more that goes into running a dropshipping business in general. I just wanted to give you guys the basic things that I wished I was aware of in the most simplistic way, just so that you have a full understanding of what you can expect to pay. But if you wanna get a little bit more information on my story as to how I was able to take one of my first ever dropshipping stores up to around $1,000 in profit every single day, then make sure you click the first link in the description down below. Or if you ever watch another YouTube video that I made not too long ago where I break down a little bit more information into all of the different Shopify apps that I use and how you can use them as a complete beginner when it comes to increasing your sales, then make sure you click the link right there. Check that video out straight after this one because it's already helped out so many people and I'm sure that it's gonna help you out too. All right guys, I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you stay safe out there. Peace.